In this video, we're going to go over the inquire question on page 141, what do you think on page 142, and thinking it through on page 143. Uh, inquire, page 141. Uh, the governments of other countries changed following the Second World War. Find out about the changes in Vietnam. Uh, hopefully, the link I provided for you uh, helped you with this question. Um, so, Japan occupied Vietnam in 1941, uh, seizing control from French colonizers. After the Japanese defeat in 1945, China moved into the north half of the country, but eventually left, ceding it to the French, and the British moved into the south. The French and communist activists fought, but they tried to negotiate. As communists gained strength in China and Russia, they supported the communists in Vietnam. The United States sent support to the French in Vietnam. Um, the separation of North and South Korea was seen as a model for Vietnam, with communists in the North and a U.S.-supported democracy in the South. By 1961, the United States was involved in a full-scale war with the communists from North Vietnam. The war went on until 1975, when the North officially won and took control of all of Vietnam. What do you think on page 142? How does government control of the internet, individuals, communication, and social media affect the power of individuals? Uh, when the people of North Korea uh, have no way to learn how citizens of other countries live, they are ignorant about what is available. Uh, when there is no private business and the government doesn't build infrastructure such as cell phone towers, it is impossible for people, especially those who are poor, to access information. Uh, because people in North Korea do not have much media access, they have limited ways to spread information against the government or to organize large protests or demonstrations. Uh, thinking it through on page 143. Uh, number one, why are early governments of Japan and Korea considered oligarchies? Now, an oligarchy is a system of government where all the decision-making making, uh power lies within a few people. The emperor and his advisors were believed to be all-powerful and all and had all the decision-making power in, in the early governments of Japan and Korea. Uh, question number two. How are oligarchies different from democracies and dictatorships? <clears throat> dictatorships are run by one person who is not given his power from God, but maintains power through controlling every aspect of society and the use of force, primarily military. Uh, democracies give the power to the people to vote for their representatives in government. Democratic governments are restricted by constitutions that protect the rights of the individual citizens. Uh, democratic governments must follow the laws of the country. Uh, oligarchies are governments formed uh, and controlled by a few individuals who believe they have the God-given right to rule the country. They can make decisions without concern about human rights of the citizens. And how are they the same? Uh, often in democracies, the power is given to a political party that can rule, much like an oligarchy, um, but only until the next election. So that would be a government in Canada that would be a majority government. So they have enough votes to uh, pass any legislation they want. Uh, dictatorships can be similar to oligarchies in that the decision makers do not have to follow the laws or constitution of a country. In dictatorships and oligarchies, citizens are not allowed to protest uh, against government decisions. Uh, question number four, create your own timeline of important events during this time period. Use the timeline on page 136 in a mo in, as a model. Okay, so in your timeline, you should have before the 1600s, Emperors ruled this region in a series of dynasties. Korea was united as a nation. Uh, from 1600 to 1850s, uh, Japan was isolated from other nations in the world, governed by nobles who were called shoguns, uh, who used warriors called samurai to maintain control. Um, in 1854, the United States initiated trade with Japan, with, uh, which was enforced by military strength. In 1868, the Maijai era begins in Japan, which gave power back to the emperor and brought modernization to Japan. In 1905, Japan annexed Korea. 
1945, Japan lost control of Korea, and Japan's emperor was stripped of power, and uh, Japan became a modern democracy. In 1948, Korea was split into two countries. Uh, the North was a communist dictatorship, and uh, the South beca uh, became a democracy. In 1987, uh, South Korea adopted a new constitution. In 2011, North Korea continued as a dictatorship and initiated aggressive action towards South Korea and the United States. So after this as well, we did see a change in the dictatorship where Kim Jong-il passed away and Kim Jong-un uh, took over his spot. And we've heard quite a few things in the past couple of years of the stunts he's pulling with his nuclear weapons program and his missile testing. Uh, question number four, consider the treaties that allow Japan to trade with other countries and annex Korea. How do they compare with the treaty process in Canada? How did they affect individuals? Uh, the Japanese, like the Europeans, did not value the cultural traditions of the nation they were taking over. In both situations, the experiences of the people living in the region being annexed were difficult because of the disrespect shown by the dominant nation. In both situations, the colonizers wanted uh, the resources available in the region to strengthen their own economies. Both regions that were annexed or colonized experienced a great change after the treaties were signed. The way in which they had traditionally lived almost disappeared. Many of the valued religious or cultural artifacts of the Koreans and First Nations people were taken, sold, or destroyed because the dominant culture did not respect these artifacts. Many First Nations women lost their treaty status when they married non-status men which meant they couldn't go back to live on the reserve if the marriage fell apart. Just as many Korean women were forced into slavery. Many First Nations people were given European sounding, na sounding names by the Indian agents, and uh, many Koreans were given Japanese sounding names. First Nations people were not allowed to speak their own language nor practice their cultural or spiritual traditions in residential schools. Japanese treated the Korean language and traditions with similar disrespect. Often in Asia, the treaties were signed after a military defeat, whereas the treaty process in Canada was started after the way of life of First Nations uh, people had been systematically dis dismantled through the allocation of traditional lands to the European settlers, the spread of disease and the destruction of traditional food sources. Uh, the treaties with First Nations people are still valid today, and the First Nations people continue to pressure the government to live up to the promises made in treaties. The treaty between Korea and Japan is no longer considered valid, so any promises made are null and void. Question number five. Which system of government has had the greatest impact on the lives of people in Japan, North Korea, and South Korea? Justify your answer. Um, so once again, you can have varying answers, uh, but Japan's uh, democracy uh, allowed the country to become one of the richest nations in the world with a highly educated and modern workforce where uh, people uh, can have a say so they can work hard to make a better future. South Korea's democracy was slower to respect the individual human rights of the people, but has become uh, an economically successful country. People believe that they have the right to say how they are governed and the right to choose how they are going to support their families. North Korea, people do not have uh, to make any decisions about the kind of work they are going to do, where they live, or how hard to work. The people do not have to take responsibility for making decisions as the government does that for them. Question uh, number six, which visuals, for example, a timeline or paragraph did you find most useful to help you understand the ideas in this section? Explain the strategies you use to get information from visuals. Uh, so once again, your answers are going to vary on this one, depending on your individual um, views, but it may include uh, ideas about looking at the picture first before reading the caption or looking at the dates on the timeline then reading the text.